The future China business environment is in a state of change right now from a very fast growth economy to an economy where efficiencies, where productivity are going to be more important. Uh, so the very basis of, um, uh, of the development of China and the future economy is changing. Um, uh, this means that uh, uh, strategies, concentration of resources, um, efficiencies, ways in which management is done will also have to adapt to these changes. China's future leaders are going to have to adapt to the environment which is changing here and because of the changes in the environment, the increasing of complexity, um, the, uh, the need to deal with uh, multifaceted businesses, the need to increase communication, the more complicated systems that are in place in business today, um, and in fact building organizations that have a culture and a life of their own means that uh, leaders will also have to adapt um, how they deal with these organizations and these challenges. First and foremost, the, the, the basis of any good leader, leader has to be um, uh, the establishment, communication of the corporate missions and values uh, uh, in the business. Uh, the, the foundation of ethical behavior is absolutely given and cannot be uh, um, uh, sacrificed or in other way diluted um, in today's and the future leaders. So that's first of all. Being able to deal with complexity across businesses, um, uh, and that certainly is in terms of going from a functional and a silo approach to aspects of the business to being able to realize synergies across business, to um, uh, realize uh, uh, um, synergies across functional areas within a, a business is going to be very, very important. And this is not easy for anybody, certainly even in um, developed countries and um, uh, developed organizations, it's a constant challenge. Um, leaders, at the end of the day, are also integral in the development of human capital. I'm a strong believer that most of development of human capital happens on the job and in the daily interactions with people with whom you work. Uh, this on-the-job coaching, on-the-job feedback, on-the-job development um, is extremely important. And this is an area in which uh, uh, future leaders are going to have to take a very cooperative approach to how they work with not only people who work for them, but people who work with them and with the leaders that they work for. The strategies developed talent in China are all about picking the right strategies for the right time here in China and where talent is um, to develop that talent. The tools and the toolbox of, of, of strategies and methods to develop challenge, uh, talent is no different in China than it is in other markets. It's really a question of which tools to use. Um, uh, we all know those tools such as overseas assignments, rotations, classroom education, uh, um, further um, third-party education, on-the-job training, um, evaluations, feedbacks, all of these things. They all have a place in today's China. I think number one um, uh, 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 here in China is getting the right base of talent to begin with. In other words, being able to hire correctly. And hiring that talent then gives you a fighting chance to further develop it. That's first of all, that's number one. Second of all, um, it's very important to push people into comfortable into situations in which they may feel uncomfortable. Um, uh, there is a need to stretch, and this is an on-the-job um, uh, development approach to um, talent. Uh, uh, advancement that's very important here. Um, other methods of um, international rotation for high potential people, um, programs in which you're using um, uh, um, high potential development um, um, are all important. We can't forget that not everybody in an organization is high potential. And it's very, very important not to create um, uh, a underclass and an overclass um, in your development and education needs. So I would like to stress that in any organization, because we all have large organizations, we have to pay attention to not only the top of talent and the bottom of talent, but really 
the bolus of talent in the middle, which um, in many ways are the um, foot soldiers in the success of our business. Um, strategies to address that, um, again, come from the same toolbox, but have to be appropriate for that level and appropriate to support the different um, needs of that group of talent. There are many tools in the talent development toolbox that can, we can bring to bear on um, developing our organization's human capital. Um, these go from very traditional approaches of training to um, tools of, um, of identification of talent to uh, uh, feedback um, instruments like 360 um, uh, uh, degree evaluations, all the way up to using um, um, more wired ways and more uh, uh, specific social media or communication tools to develop uh, um, talent. In our case, um, uh, really, talent development is um, quite a bit about actual experiences in the workplace and extending yourself into areas where you have talent development needs and where you as a leader can um, profit. Um, we use uh, integrate. We use technology in in, in our um, educational um, uh, systems, e-learning. Um, we use technology in terms of how we manage um, the thousands of employees we have. Um, we use technology to deliver messages and to receive feedback and evaluations. Um, and certainly, in terms of how we automate and how we structure. A lot of this is done through instruments like Workday or Platinum, uh, these platforms to manage our talent. Um, uh, certainly there's a lot more that we can do. Um, there's more that we can do, for example, in uh, projecting our message into the uh, organization through social media, establishing these kinds of platforms. And I think that's a challenge these days. Um, especially in a developing country like China, with a large wired infrastructure to participate in, in these instruments like WeChat or Weixing uh, um, for communication and development of our business.